welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a workshop vlog again. I haven't done one of these for a few months now and I thought it would be about time I should do one. I've got lots of new tools, lots of new timber and some vintage tools as well as a few other bits and bobs. So let's get going. So we're going to start over by this wood pile here. So I was working today and I picked up some wood. So I've got this huge oak thin. I think this is going to be absolutely awesome for making some boxes and I'm also going to use one to make a sort of fake top to a shelf project that I'm doing to cover up some bits and bobs and I'm just going to put this on top of a piece of thin MDF or something like that just so it's got a bit more character and something a little bit more interesting. Then we have another one of these really nice oak thins. I think these are going to be absolutely lovely. I definitely am going to make some boxes out of them. I have started practicing again just cutting some joinery bits getting all that started so that I can start doing dovetails. They will happen, don't worry, it's just when, I don't know. But I really, really like these oak thins, really smooth, and I absolutely love the colour in them. Not entirely sure how much stuff I'll make out of them in a couple of weeks, but they'll get, definitely get used across the next few months. Now apologies for all the noises and clattering, the wind out there is absolutely howling, and I've got to film this video now, I don't have much other options of when to film it, so we're just going to have to make the best with the wind. Then I've got this, which was an offcut, and it's got laminated boards, so this was quite a nice bit of oak that's been glued up, there's three bits of oak here. It has got a knot at the very top, but I can easily cut that out. I think this will make an absolutely lovely shelf, or perhaps even some sort of table. Haven't decided yet. If you guys have any ideas what I should be doing with these, let me know because I don't have any set ideas apart from this one which I'm pretty sure I want to use to display some of my hand tools. This is an absolutely stunning bit of beach. Love the sapwood here. So you've got the sapwood and the heartwood and I think this contrast is absolutely lovely. I actually prefer this to normal beach. I think the way, I think the colour variation here is way more exciting than ordinary beach. And I really, really like that piece. That's probably my favourite piece out of all of them. So some of those are going to get turned into boxes, some into shelves, and some I don't really know yet. I've also got lots of other bulb lengths, so we'll move over there and I'll show you what I've got now. So it's probably been a while since you've been over here and seen this area. So these are some bulb projects I'm working on currently. You can see we've got Sobrano, Mango, whatnot there, some bits of other timber. There's loads of bits and bobs there. And then if I just come behind here, you can see we've got the greenwood bowl here. So this is this project that I've been working on for a while now. I'm just letting it dry out. I'll let it dry out for about another month and then I'll fill it with resin. It's had about two months to dry now. But it was already partly dry when I turned it. Then if you look behind here, I've got all of these lovely, lovely pieces of key out here. These are absolutely stunning, especially the top one. I am a sucker for a bit of sapwood and heartwood. I think it looks so nice and especially that piece. I really do like that. Then we've got some walnut bowl blanks, just small ones. This gorgeous bit of paduk. Absolutely love the colours in this. Again, sapwood and heartwood. This oak bowl that I started trying to turn but I haven't quite got the hang of the bowl gouge so I'm going to leave that until I'm a bit more confident. Mapper bowl. This is essentially poplar, it's just a bowl form. Another big oak blank, another oak blank. A uh, kiat and then a piece of ash. Two poplars that I'm working on, plywood bowl blanks. Mango, a bit of ash, mango. Um, oak, what's that, brown oak. Um, I think this is Tam something. Let's have a look. And of course I've decided to take the label off. Tam Boating. I haven't taken the label off luckily. So we've got that and then we've got two elm bowl blanks and an oak one. And as I said, I've got lots of bowl blanks and I've also got these three beach ones here. And I have so many projects planned for all of this. Hopefully I'll get around to turning all of these over the next few months. But if not, no worries but I'm really, really looking forward to turning some of these, especially the Mapper Bell, the Paduk, and the Big Oak one. They're the ones I'm most excited to turn, as I think they're going to be the most interesting. Now, the most obvious new tool purchase is my lathe. This is the Axminster 370WL, meaning it can turn a 370mm bowl over the bed. Now, this has a swivelling headstock, mechanical variable speed, and I've put all my tools here, and some other bits and bobs. I absolutely love this lathe. I'm yet to fully push it to its boundaries, but it is an absolutely awesome lathe to use. Really, really a big fan of it. It is quite noisy, but apparently these sort of lathes are. But that's the biggest new tool purchase I've purchased recently. Over here in the wood corner, I've had a good tidy up. 
you can see I don't actually have that much wood because the majority of this is just pine chipboard and bits of melamine or melamine um, and MDF and stuff like that not actual wood as you can see but I have got some ash, some sapili. I think I've got a bit more sapili behind here. This nice maple thin. Um, what else have I got? And then I've got some offcuts in these bins. These are just sort of my tiny offcut bins. A bit of poplar there. And just some other bits and bobs that I'm sorting through and projects on the go. So this is all how to tidy up over here. So now let's go on to these tools. So over in this section, I've got some new tools. So I'm gonna show you those. And yes, I'm not actually sitting down, I'm kneeling down it's much easier to be able to show things to the camera. So I'm just going to whiz through all of these. These were kindly donated to me by the builder and it was, they actually came from the person who did our wardrobes but the builder bought them round for me. And this is absolutely awesome so I'm so thankful to both of them for giving me all of these lovely, lovely vintage tools. So here we've got a marking gauge or a scribe gauge. Really, really excited to be using this. I actually need one of these so that's a particularly useful tool for me. And these two are also equally useful. Some squares. I don't actually have a proper carpenter's square. This is a really nice one made by Marples. It's an old one, but it just needs a clean up. Get some wild wool on it and maybe a bit of um, 400 grit sandpaper. Just clean off the rust and I'll give it all a nice oil. Some Allen keys. I got lots of Allen keys, but can never have enough of those. Try not to drop them at least though. Um, a screwdriver. Just a small screwdriver. That's cool. These, which I believe are metal shears. Don't have a pair of these, and actually I've got quite a lot of sheet metal lying around in the workshop, so these are going to be a lot more useful than I'll actually think that I originally thought they would be, because I've realised how much sheet metal I've got, and I actually have quite a few projects planned, it's just time, and obviously I don't always have the time to do things. Another little knife, these are useful, I'm going to actually paint this, I might have a bit of fun painting that, do it in some funky colours. Pair of needle nose pliers, again useful to have. I'm saving my favourite things to last. Drywall saw, don't have one of those. Think this might be some sort of drywall saw, I'm not sure. If anyone knows what this actually is, please let me know. It's quite old, again, a lot of these tools are quite old, so they may be something that I don't know. A pair of wire strippers, I think I've got a pair of these, but you can never have enough of these sort of things. Now these are absolutely awesome. So I'd never heard of these before. They're called Yankee screwdrivers, they're made by Stanley I believe. This is a number 135A and it's actually in pretty good condition. So it's like this and then it's basically you pump this down, obviously you'd be doing it into a screw, and the head of the screwdriver actually moves, as you can see. So that is an absolutely awesome thing and they can go both ways. So you just push it down, I'm trying to do this without actually screwing something so it's not the easiest. And then it locks in like that. Then I've just got an ordinary ratchet screwdriver. Again, same sort of era, nice tools. These ones, some giant Yankee screwdrivers. Here's my arm for scale. You can see how big this one is. So these are really cool. I have to say these are the coolest thing. These are so cool. Don't know how practical they'll be, but they're absolutely awesome. And they come with these special interchangeable bits. I'm incredibly excited to use these though. I think they're going to be so awesome. And I've got another one here as well. So I'll keep one for flatheads, one for crossheads. But they're really awesome. Long screwdriver, flathead. Really like having long screwdrivers like that. Useful for opening things. I know people are not going to like that, but I like to have a long-handed screwdriver for doing things like that. I have no idea what this thing is. It says Spiralux. If anyone knows what this is, please let me know. I have absolutely no idea what it is. So, would appreciate you guys letting me know. Now, I think I have some idea what this is. I think this is for cutting grooves because it's got a fence on it and it's got this plane on it. So this plane actually slides and it has, if I can work out how it works again, an adjustable depth stop here. I don't know how well you can see that. You can just about make it out there. So it's got an adjustable depth stop. Um, and yeah, I believe it's for cutting grooves. It would make a lot of sense, to be honest, based off the shape of it, and the fact it's got a fence here. So I think it goes along a board like that, and you can cut grooves. If that's the case, that is gonna be so fun to use, and actually incredibly useful. Now, I've got one of these in brass, so I can't remember what the name of it is, though. 
But again, it's for doing like edges of um, tenons, or is it a mortise? Tenon. I don't know, either way. I don't really do that much joinery. Although I really would like to try and practice my hand to woodworking. I missed actually doing proper woodworking as opposed to wood turning. So I want to get back into making some boxes and doing some proper woodworking again because I have really missed that. But yeah, we've got this one. Then I think this is for flattening stones and things. I'm not sure. A plate of metal, which feels like it's got grit on it. So I'm going to guess that's for flattening stones. Um, a load of stones here. Um, a lovely, lovely vintage woodworking plane. The handle's broken, but I can repair that. It's easy enough to do. I'll make a new one if need be. Absolutely awesome. Now, let me know if you guys think this is a particularly valuable one. There's no maker's mark on this one as far as I can see. Um, because if it's not, I will clean it up. But when I say clean up, I'm only going to clean it sympathetically. I mean, I will definitely take the blades out and probably get new blades because, well, they're rusty completely. But apart from that, it's actually in pretty decent nick, especially given these are about 100 years old because they were the person who gave, me, who gave this to me. It was his grandfather's stuff, so he reckons they're probably about 100 years old, but we're not entirely sure. Um, then we've got this one, which does have a manufacturer's name on it, Master. I tried to have a quick Google about it, but I'm not entirely sure. If someone wants to let me know, that'd be great. I did take a very, very um, slightly damp towel to it, um, kitchen towel, just to clean it, just so I could see the name of the manufacturer, because it's covered in dust. So I'll clean them all with just a um, tea towel or kitchen towel with a bit of water, just to clean them all up and see how they're doing. But yeah, we've got this one, which is absolutely lovely. I really, really do like this. And again, it's got a broken handle, but it's been glued back in place and seems to hold perfectly fine. But these are so nice. Again, I don't know how practical they'll be, but they look absolutely awesome. They're definitely going to have pride of place somewhere on the wall in here, or at least that's the plan. I don't know where yet, but I want them to go up somewhere. I'm trying to work out where because, as you can see, I'm already sort of filling this space on the wall. But I think I'll be able to find some space up on the, um, up on the wall over here. I think there'll be some space over there that I can probably put them on. So they were all of the vintage tools I was given, and I think that's absolutely awesome that I was given so many awesome bits and bobs. So hopefully they're going to all get cleaned up nicely, and I'll get to using them in a few more projects. Now over here we have the firm FFZ400N scroll saw that I was kindly gifted by the returning woodturner. I'll put a link down below to his Instagram. So yeah, this was given to me. It was very rusty, but the <laughs> rust isn't really that big a deal. It was only the bed that was rusty. So I took some sandpaper to that, spent a couple of hours cleaning it, and I've waxed the beds and cleaned it all up, bought some new blades for it, replaced this hose, but I still need to buy a bellow just because the rubber has perished, so that it actually works with the dust blower. But I actually used this to cut something. So I've actually made this with it. So this is going to be a stained glass project, and essentially, stained glass will go behind it. Now, I haven't bought stained glass, I've bought lighting gels. So these are used in performing arts and all that stuff. I'll show you what I mean. So essentially, you have coloured gels, and these go over lights, and they give different colours. So for example, yellow, this is a black. You can make out what I mean anyway. Green, pink. So these are going to be what I use, and I'll cut them out and glue them to the back of this. This is just cut out of oak thin. I might use some of that oak to make some things like this again, because it's quite nice to cut on the scroll saw. And it's quite close grain, so it cuts really well, and also holds its shape really nicely. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this, I have to say. I just cut out a template online and then I've turned it into this, but I'm really, really happy with it. For my first ever project on this skull saw, the only thing I've actually cut before I did this was this and a piece of plastic. I'm definitely a bit out of practice with making these workshop vlogs. It's been a while since I've done one, if we're being honest. That dust extractor is going to be an absolute godsend in this workshop. I just need to get the dust extraction sorted properly, so I just need to get some piping and I can connect it to the lathe, the bandsaw, and a planar thicknesser. Now, you're probably wondering, I don't actually have a planar thicknesser here yet, obviously. I'm in the process of looking for one, 
I don't particularly want to buy brand new on this case. I'd rather buy second hand and get a better quality one or an older one. So if you guys know of any good planar thicknesses, then let me know. I'm trying not to spend more than £500. £500 would be my upper limit, and that includes planing and thicknessing. And I ideally want a 10-inch planer, so I think that's 260mm, 254mm to be precise. But ideally I want about 260mm of planing capacity. So that's the sort of ideal sort of aim, 10-inch or 25mm. Um, 250 mil planing capacity, which would mean I can plane all of those boards, the loft boards that sit up over there on those racks. So that's what I want to be able to do with all of those. So I need a 10 inch planer or a 250 mil planing capacity, and I want to be able to thickness stuff as well. Now I don't want to spend more than 500 pounds, and I ideally want it to be a cast iron construction. So the ones I'm looking at at the moment are the DeWalt DW50, which is about the same age as my band, so about 40 odd years old. Looks like a great built machine, apparently the fence can be a little bit um, thin but there's nothing stopping me upgrading the fence or adding some rigidity to it. So that's one that gets a lot of good reviews because it's made of cast iron and it's a really popular one for hobbyists. I've also looked at some other ones, accidents to ones, but they're too expensive at the moment. Um, I did look at the Triton ones getting brand new but they're just too small for me and I would rather buy something old, I like older tools to be honest. Um, the DeWalt one's the one that I'm most interested in. I did look at a um, industrial, more industrial style one, which was actually on there for fairly cheap, but I can't have it because it's three phase, and three phase won't work in my workshop. I need one phase or 240 volts. I'm looking for a plane of thickness. If you guys know of any good ones, and I do want good, high quality second hand ones, I don't want to buy a cheap, um, old, cheap new one that's just not going to last. I want something that's going to last me and be good quality. The accents, the laves are good quality, um, they're made by a reputable brand. Yes, older stuff will be better in terms of its construction, it's cast iron, but the new stuff the accents to make I, I think are really good and that's why I've spent quite a lot of money on accents. I've got the extractor, the lathe, oh my gosh I have spent a lot on them, um, the bench grinder, the sander, I think that's all the accents to machinery I've got. But yeah, the must connect this trade extractor, I really must. I'm going to write it on my whiteboard. And you know what, tonight I'm going to order that, so it's Friday night, it's, what's that, 6 o'clock, I can't see, 5 past 6, um, so I'm going to get that dust extraction ordered tonight, if Axminster is stocking it, if not I'll order elsewhere, um, and I'm going to hook it up to the lathe, so I need to get a splitter that allows me to have a Y splitter so that I can split it to a plane of thickness or eventually, I might as well buy it now um, with the connections I need, given they're not always in stock. I want two, three, I need three blast gates. I need one for the planar thickness, and one for the lathe, and one for the bandsaw. And I may also just get an extra one. Well, I don't need an extra one because I, I can't sweep this floor. This floor has to be hoovered because it's carpet. I've still closed the wood tennis blend store. It's been closed for about a month because I just haven't had the time to focus on it. But I'm going to make a stock over the next week. Hopefully, I'm going to try and make a stock of about 30. Then I can reopen the store. But it, I don't know when I'm going to open it. I'm hoping to open it middle of August, end of August, then it can all be reopened, restocked, and it'll be a big sort of launch again of Woodtons Blend. Because I've had loads of people inquire about when I'm going to open it, or when am I going to start making it again, I will get round to it. There's so many things I've got to do at the moment, and I just don't always have as much time as I wish. Leatherworking for one, I really, really want to do leatherworking. I wouldn't have spent all the money on a kit if I didn't want to do it. I still think I might get round to that. I might actually take it into the garden and do some of that. The other thing is HDPE, so for those of you who don't know, that's like bottle caps, milk bottles, it's high density polyethylene. Um, I've been saving, I've probably got, I don't know, a thousand bottle caps now, and a few hundred, mm, probably about 50 milk bottles. So I've cut all those up, um, and I'm going to be making HDPE bowls, so like cereal bowls and things like that. And they'll be able to go through the dishwasher and things, so they'll be perfectly food safe, and obviously food is packaged in them. So that's the plan, and I've been watching Brothers Makes videos on those. And yeah, really, really excited to be doing HDP stuff. That's going to happen probably not till Christmas time, if I'm going to be truthful with myself here, because I still need to get a panini press. And it'll be a while before I can get that. But once I've got that, then it will all be um, ready to start that. Right, a couple of other things to show you, and then we'll call it there for the vlog. So I bought a couple of bits on Amazon, and some of them were necessities, some weren't. So the first one is this Gorilla Super Glue. This is sort of a necessity for wood turning. I want to do a few things, so uh, CA glue finish, 
and also have some cracks and things that I need to fill in some projects, like that map above, for example. I suspect that's going to need a bit of stabilisation from some CA glue. I don't know, I haven't turned map above, but if it's anything like poplar, which it is because it's poplar bow, then it's probably going to need some stabilising. Now, always wanted to try this. I've got some milliput in black. So, so excited to try that. Now, this is for a project that I've got upcoming. Copper wire, one and a half mil thick. Now, the reason I bought this is I've got two projects I want to do with it. One is copper wire braiding around a bowl. The second is a big project. So, I'm going to make a bowl, turn it. Then I'm going to get some seaweed, some things from the beach, and burn it with those, because seaweed gives colours and things to pottery. So I figured it may work for bowls. And also, I've read some things online that it can give colours and textures to bowls and things like that, wooden objects. So I'm going to try and burn, and I mean really burn, I'm going to burn it to the point where it's practically scorched beyond recognition. And then I will put some resin in it, turn the inside, then I'm going to cut out a crack in it, but try and make it look natural and I'm going to try and stitch copper across it. Then the next purchase was these 3M Pelotor headphones or ear defenders. Now I put on an Instagram poll about these. I got about half half for which ones were better, but I got quite a few DMs that didn't vote for the thing about how good these were. Um, I'm pretty sure they're the same ones Sean Evely has actually. So, is there anything else I need to cover? Longboard video, please check that one out. Slightly disappointed that didn't do as well for views. I thought it was going to do a lot better than it did. A lot of work went into the video and things, but, you know, some videos don't do it as well. But I have a feeling that might be one that grows slowly over time. Then I released the coffee stain bowl. I have a feeling that's going to do well. And then I've also got this video coming out, making these really over-the-top um, push sticks for the bandsaw. Mahogany one here. So these are totally over the top. No need to make anything as fancy as that. But I wanted to, just to test myself, have a bit of fun with some dowels. That video will be coming out next two weeks time. We've got the workshop vlog. I think I'm gonna try and get this out tonight. It's Friday night. I only put the coffee stain bowl out last night, but why not have two videos back to back? But yeah, that's everything for this workshop vlog. Thank you ever so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed seeing what's happening at the moment, where I've been with all these things. I have been making things, it's just sometimes videos take a lot of time to film, so I don't always have the time to do everything. But thank you very much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next week for the scroll saw restoration video. Thank you very much for watching.